you're trying to pipette an ethanol solution and it kind of just drips out, this happens because ethanol is volatile. What this means is it evaporates easily, and it's going to evaporate in the air cushion above the liquid in your pipette, causing that air to expand and putting pressure on the liquid, pushing it out even when you're not pushing down the plunger. To get around this, what you can do is you can pre-wet your pipette. So basically you pipette up and down a few times before you do it for reals. What this is gonna do is it's going to saturate the air cushion. So it's basically going to make it humid. So that what's gonna happen is that the rate of evaporation, so the ethanol evaporating is going to equal the rate of the condensation, the ethanol going back into the liquid form. Now what happens when you pipette more, it's still gonna be at that equilibrium and so you're not gonna get a change in the volume, you're not gonna get dripping. But you are gonna have to do some extra work, it's gonna take longer because you have to pipette up and down a few times before your sample. If you're pipetting a small volume and you need to pre-wet, you can pre-wet with a larger volume. That's gonna make it better, easier to equilibrate that air cushion to saturate it than if you were just trying to like pipette up and down a couple microliters of your ethanol or whatever. If you are really urgent um, or something like that, another option is reverse pipetting. A pipette has a couple different stops. So there's like a first stop and then there's a second stop. Normal pipetting, what you do is you go down to the first stop with your thumb into the liquid, pull up, and pull out. Then to dispense, you go into the liquid and you push down all the way to that full stop, the second stop. Hold down your thumb and pull out. So you pull, you aspirate or suck up and you dispense um, all of the liquid that you put, you sucked up. With reverse pipetting, you're actually going to suck up or aspirate more than you're going to release. What's going to happen now is you're going to start by going all the way to that full stop, go in, pull it up. Now there's more in your pipette than you need. You're still gonna get some dripping, but the dripping is gonna be coming from that extra volume that's going to be left when you go and you dispense, you go to that first stop, not to the second stop. And you have this extra volume in here that this is where that leaking stuff was coming from, not from the actual volume that you wanted to pipette. But you're still going to get that leaking onto your tubes potentially, and so, that could be an issue and you want to make sure that whenever you're doing anything with ethanol or whatever you want to make sure that you're using solvent resistant markers if possible i like to mark things on multiple places on the tube in case one of them comes off if you are doing um, some sort of micro spin column um, you might want to be careful when you have the ethanol markings up here that it doesn't go and get into your sample tube um, and then you're you end up with like your DNA, why is it black? Oh, maybe you've got some Sharpie in there. Pipette really, really slowly. What's gonna happen is that these things have a tendency to kind of jump back up into your pipette if you release your thumb too soon. Now this can lead to like drops up here. And what you can do is if you get a drop like on the side of the tube, don't panic, just pull up until the liquid reaches the drop on the side of the tube and use the liquid to help pull it back down. Keep your thumb pushed out all the way down, um, assuming you're using forward pipetting on your way out so you don't pull things up. Um, and this is a big issue if you're doing something like a mini prep where the wash buffers often have ethanol in them and so you're doing a bunch of different tubes and you might be going fast, um, you might be going up and down and up and down and it kind of just like squirts back up. You wanna avoid that splashback, not just so you get don't get drops on the side of the pipette tip, but also so you don't want it to contact the plunger because there could be gunk on there and then the ethanol is going to dissolve that gunk and get it into your sample. Or if you're using a filter tip, what's going to happen is you're going to clog up the filter and this can cause problems. You're going to mess up the volumes and all sorts of different stuff. One other thing is if you want to get super duper fancy, they have like positive displacement pipettes where basically what it has is it has instead of the air cushion above your sample that's being used to push it out, there's like a disposable tip that's actually going to directly contact the, the stuff in the tip and push it out. Um, and so that's another option, but then you need a whole different type of pipette. No matter what pipette. So to prevent the leakage of an ethanol or another volatile solution, use your pre-wetting. So up, down, up, down, up, down, three to five times or so, depending on the solution before you go to pipette. And this will prevent it from dripping. You can also do reverse pipetting. You're still going to get the dripping, but the dripping is gonna be from the excess, not from the stuff that you actually care about. And remember with reverse pipetting, you go all the way down to the second stop, then you go in, pull out. When you dispense, you only go to that first stop and you leave in the stuff in the tube, in the end of this excess, in the end of the tube. 
Remember to pipette slowly, both going in and going out. Make sure to, you stay in control. Don't let that stuff splash back up in your pipette. And if it does, then pull up the liquid slowly. Use that liquid to help pull the, everything back down out. So hope that helps you pipette volatile stuff.